Oh, here we go. Okay, fine. Right now, and, and, and look, I'm not an environmental nut by any means, but I just look at hard facts. And hard facts, and I've been to Brazil. I've actually seen what's happened down there. I've actually I traveled up there. I, I know. Where the whole scenario. I know. It takes, you know, 10 times or 12 times the biomass to like feed a cow from what you actually extract in terms of nutritive value. It would make a whole heck of a lot more sense instead of growing the cow as an animal and killing it if you could simply fabricate the stuff that resembles its flesh, luckily. In other words, if I could just grow a steak, now, whether that's done with cloning technology or with an actual nanosome, but okay, there could be some arguments about the technology, but that's the kind of thing I'm looking for, i.e., you have generic sort of peptide stew, if you will, out of which you can contrive the food substance of choice. That's a great application. A peptide stew. Correct. What, would, what is that? Well, you simply, I mean, all cells are nothing more than a bunch of proteins and peptides and some other what I call organic glue logic that really represents the software of what that cell consists of. Uh -huh. Fine. We are all nothing more than software. All right, well then, so that my mind can grasp this, does that mean you could take a pile of dirt and throw it in a machine and it would convert the molecules in the dirt to become yeah. steak or whatever yeah. else you want. Yeah, no, I, I know what you're trying to get at. Is that what we're saying? Sort of. Not exactly, but sort of. In other words, if there was enough of the stuff you wanted present in that kind of soil, it depends on the kind of soil you're dealing with, per se. Right. But I visualize sort of a generic organic gray goo of sorts, if you want to call that. It was like, like genetic. You know, you might have like 10 different variations that has a high percentage of protein so you can actually get a meat like substance out of it and then you can flavor the meat certain ways. You know, all these but these are all chemistry processes. Therefore, once you've mapped in the software of that molecular matrix, theoretically, yeah, you can have whatever steak with whatever flavor or something other and you can invent things that don't exist now. This to me is the real boundary I'm interested in. You can invent things that do not now exist. Right. New That's materials, uh, like new the materials, paint. New materials, new biological. Like the paint you described, that you would paint, say, your roof with and turn it into a, uh, a energy collector. Exactly. And I want to toss in one last little, this is just an Art Bell kind of uh, thing. Sure. Um, since, you know, Area 51 and Roswell and all that kind of stuff, you know, I'm on the fence about it. I think it could be possible that somebody dropped in, they shot a probe down. But that's what they shot down with a probe. Well, was in that capsule if they actually had one was not the aliens themselves. No, they're not going to send themselves. I mean, that's, that's dumb. I mean, forgive me. But they would send down, though, engineered biobonds. Engineered biobonds. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I've heard uh, the Grays referred to exactly that way by some. Wild card line, you're on the air with Charles Osman. Hi. Do the wild thing at 702-727-1295. Uh, yes, we, you're not allowed to give your last name on the, on the air, sir. Okay, Mike. From San Diego, California. Mike from San Diego will have to do. All right. Okay. Listen, uh, uh, this guy sounds very interesting, but he's going off in a thousand different directions. Yep. It's really hard to understand uh, where he's coming from and where he's going. Well, I I think I do sort of grasp it. I, I I like you though, am missing parts of it, but I'm I'm smart enough to know that what I'm hearing is right. Do you, do, what is your understanding? Let, let me ask you, Probably Colin. about 10%. All right, but... I've uh, got a college degree. That 10%, uh, what does that 10% tell you you've just heard? Uh, something out of this world. No. It's something inside this world. <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that person who just called, and thank you, actually has highlighted the very essence of what I do today. Uh-huh. Corporate CEO types, guys that have gone to the most expensive business, you know, Brown School business or whatever, the most, you know, any you name a top school, they've gone there, they're parked on a desk, they're, they've got all the, you know, sort of quasi corporate power one can dream of, and yet they don't know what's going on. They're pleading for some way to have a crystal ball. They come to people like me, you know, and if you saw me, to go, why? Because I have a bunch of hair and a beard and so on. And they think I'm going to have the answer. Well, this is the stuff that the future is going to be made of. Yeah, you're saying the, that the answer to our question, space travel, does not lie with solid fuel rockets or liquid rockets or any blunder must bust method like that. The answer to our disease control, to our longevity, uh, e even immortality, right. uh, to our food supply problems, to right. everything you can imagine, right. lies not out there, but, in, but here. in here. And knowing how to cross synergize, I will submit to you that the synerg these are all vectors on a synergy grid. That synergy grid 
is where the value is, not the points in the back, not, not, not the vector points. The, how you connect the dots, if I can say it that way, you can. is what has the value. Makes you sound a little like Richard, but... <laughs> well, actually, on my business card, it says strategic synergist. And I actually, when I, the Global Futures uh, group that I'm part of, that's what we do. People come to us from around the world. Um, and say, we have this incredibly complex problem. We didn't realize it was going to require 14 different threads of information. To it's really to hard to imagine a whole room of people like you together <laughs> surviving. Uh, we, yeah, there is a, well, it's a new, it's a new type of techno-scientific discipline <laughs> where social science, economics, and 10 or 12 different set of disciplines have to actually be cross-correlated to come up with one contiguous information stream. All right. Uh, all right, Charles, hold on. Uh, we're at the bottom of the hour. It is tomorrow. tomorrow's world today, and you've got to kind of get in this uh, to understand what it is he's talking about, but what he's really saying is it's all here now. It's just learning to use it. We'll be right back. This is the CBC Radio Network. Stretch your mind with us a little bit this morning. What we're talking about is a whole different world. And I'll illustrate that in a moment. All right, my guest is Charles Osman. The, um, uh, the subject is nanotechnology. And first I'm going to give him a very simple question. And then I'm going to give him a question he thoroughly deserves, one I don't even understand myself. Uh, Charles, yeah. um, if I understand what you've been saying correctly, the ma manipulation of molecules would allow, for example, um, you to set a nanotechnological army uh, into the task of making gold bars. Well, not exactly. Now you're you're mixing up, and I don't mean. Forgive me. I, I want to make. Well, if perfect. I can create food. Oh, okay. In a in a food substance, you're creating a molecular matrix of existing proteins and peptides and other biomolecular sort of building blocks. All right. So I couldn't create gold. Well, you can create gold, but not this way directly. But let me explain. At Lawrence Laboratory, where I spent many years of my life in the days of work, we did make gold. It was an accelerator. But it costs tens of thousands of dollars to make one gram. Why? Because of the energy it took to propel particles towards a target. We were breaking apart and rebuilding the nuclei of atoms so that we would eventually end up with the resultant atom that had the atomic structure of gold. Now, with a superconductive accelerator, yes. where the cost of the energy drops to virtually zero, and those superconductors are fabricated with materials that were nanotechnology-created uh, substances. You see how that link works? I you wouldn't use the nanotech to directly make the I understand. But you use the nanotech to make the superconductive power supply that would drive the machine that makes it. So power. energy uh, to accomplish the goal would no longer be part of the equation. That's correct. Then all of a sudden, gold would be like these. You got it. Yeah, gold worthless. So the entire monetary system changes. That's what I was trying to allude to before. All right, here, what... here's a question I don't understand. I'm going to ask you because you deserve a question. Like this. <laughs> By uh, all, means. all right, here it comes. The Pauli exclusion principle claims no two electrons in an atom may possess the same four quantum numbers. Since these numbers determine the behavior of electrons in an atom, the principle is used to establish the number of arrangements of electrons in the atomic structure. Good God. Are the event horizons going to be connected to said atomic structure? Since scalar propulsion technology can fold or flip magnetic fields inside out, unfolding a space-time structure. Well, I'm going to say that this is not the area of physics I could claim to be a specialist. <laughs> now we're crossing the so-called hyperdimensional domains and we're talking about... Now, I have friends that do this kind of stuff. This is, they're theoreticians and this is their cup of tea. And they'll talk about things like, right now, us creatures, uh, us folks here in the domain that we're familiar with, we are equipped uh, cognitively and in a sort of interstitial fabric of awareness we can see three spatial and one temporal dimension. That's what we know about. That's what we're designed to interact with. Right. doesn't mean that there aren't others out there. And in fact, right here at UC Berkeley, every year a bunch of physicists get together. They're the kind of folks that probably would answer this question. And they say, well, have we resolved special relativity yet? No, we're getting closer, though. Let's throw another dimension at it. So right now they're up to 
23 or 24 spatial dimensions and some number of temporal ones. I don't okay. really keep track of the process. But that's, that's the kind of problem that would solve that one. Anyway, I feel I owed you that question. Thank you very much. I you're like you're it. You're welcome. Used to the Rockies, you're on the air with Charles Osman. Hi. Yes, hi. This is Jason from Wisconsin. Hi. Uh, my question is, if this kind of technology was released into the public right now, what kind of effect would it have? Well, that's a very good question, and it's just the kind of question I try to answer fairly often. All right. The, the one thing I can start with is saying it's not going to be a one thing. I mean, this is a really hard thing to get across because unlike, say, nuclear power or some other horrible, poisonous thing that we created because of some manufacturing process, it's not a one-thing issue. It's going to be a gradation of a whole bunch of things that synergistically interact with each other. Mm -hmm. Probably the biologicals are going to be first, followed by competing, changing in a way that can only begin to sort of get the essence of now, which is why I tried to communicate with you earlier. Uh, material science has said they're going to have a whole plethora of changes, and they'll come across in very subtle ways. You know, smart materials, things that learn about you and mold themselves. What, 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 something really simple is a class of materials called polyacrylamide gels. It's something that came out of Japan. So in other words, we're going to be like slowly boiling frogs. The technology is yes. going to come, and we're going to accept it as it comes. That's correct. All right, and, that's and there will always be a three-tiered system, sort of with the same political model I offered before, only the technology model. Right now you have the consumer level, stuff that you and I or anyone that can have claims on their sure. bought and buy. You have the military level, which is like supposedly it's always been around 10 to 12 years out from where the consumer level is. Then above that you have the sort of the black level, which is stuff that only a few key people really know about and is fed under extremely controlled conditions to certain key homelessness. Yeah, they're the right. ones that I'm worried about. Uh, first time caller line, you're on the air with Charles Osman. Hi. I can barely hear you, sir. Can you hear me now? That's better. Well, yeah, a little bit. This is Tom from Denver. Yes. And uh, I don't know, I'm a uh, fairly new listener. I've only been listening for about two months now, and I think this is the best program you've had on. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, it's wonderful. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, I was listening to you, uh, to, uh, or as Charles, uh, I think, uh, expanded your reality concepts and all of our reality concepts, is that uh, I just wondered, uh, have you ever thought maybe this is a natural involvement, if this is, if this has happened before, that we yes. Oh, I'm sure he, he believes that, yes. This uh, is a completely common model that's as broad as building blocks. And a whole bunch of critters out there throughout the known universe got sort of close to this and failed. A few went beyond this point. But this is like one of the great test marker points in a continuum of evolutionary steps that we go through. Uh -huh. And other organisms go through as well. West of the Rockies, you're on the air with Charles Osman. Hi. Hi, this is Catherine from Portland. Catherine, speak right into your phone. Yeah, it's okay. a little hard to hear. There we go. All right, how's that? That's Much a little better. better. That's great. Well, I was wondering if we could use the nanotechnology to help clean up the mess we've already made like little critters that could munch up oil spills. Absolutely. Thank oil. you. That's a very good question. And, in fact, I have a, I, I should, I've, I've got to confess to Art because he warned me about this. I've got a whole bunch of friends out there who are listening right now, many of them who are serious web developers. For instance, I, let me just throw a plug in. A long time friend of mine. A guy by the name of Bruce Nehmer started this thing called the Biota Project, of which I'm a member. We're actually growing plants online. We have this entire environment. In fact, there's going to be this huge trade show called Seagrass, and you'll be able to see oh, it. Wait a place. minute, wait a minute. You're growing plants online? That's right. You Excuse got me. it. You mean what kind of plants? Uh, these are, well, it uses a process called l system frapples, and I won't bore you with a bunch oh of math talk. But God. the point is, we have, Bruce actually invented this language called nerves, which is a hybrid of vermal, and it has special little hooks in it, so you can embed neural net and genetic algorithms within the vermal script. And you go in, you plant a seed, and this thing sprouts. There is a what? world out there. Listen to this. There is a world out there right now. I talk, I talk about the virtual terraform. I'm not kidding. There's Alpha World, populated with over 100,000 people. I'm one of them. You can visit me anytime you like. You can drop into your avatar, say, hi, Charles. I've got a house called the Temple of Chaos. <laughs> there are whole cities. There's actually a guy that did a, a satellite, and you can log into the website and log see from 50,000 feet up. This, you know, five trillion square meter virtual terraform is cities and there's roads and there's rivers and people go there. And All right, wait a minute. I already forgot this poor lady's question.